Hi, yeah. So, it's Christmas movie roundup too. <laughs> the return. Um, I've only got eight percent battery on my iPad, and I'm using my mirror with the charger for my iPad to make it really light. Otherwise, it goes really greeny on my screen. So, we might have to make this very quick. Anyway, um, so we're gonna start off. We're gonna do it really quick. We've got a lot of Netflix ones this time. Um, so, but we're going to start with the Christmas 24 um, movies. We've actually got Disney Plus ones as well. Um, but we're going to start with the Christmas 24 ones. And we're going to do this really quick fire because the last video I did was like nearly half an hour long. And no one wants to stick around for half an hour to hear me ramble on. So we're going to do this quick. So I've got it all on my phone. <laughs> so the um, first one I watched was called A Timeless Christmas. Uh, I liked it. That was about it. It's not very memorable. So basically, it was about this guy um, who bought this clock for his fiance, and um, basically the clock transported him to 2020 because he was from like 1920, um, and he ended up in his house in the future where it was turned into a museum because there was a famous disappearance and that. And basically, he falls in love with one of the managers of the hotel, uh, the hotel, the museum rather. There's so many hotels in these films. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so he falls in love. It's, it was a cute film. Nothing special. It was nice to have one, like one of the Christmas 24 films with a bit of a different plot in the sense that it wasn't just, oh, I've got a job, I have to go here and do and end up in this small town. It was, no, I've time travelled. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, do you like my big eyelashes? I just did my makeup, just for fun, you know. I quite like it. Anyway, um, okay, I'm going to talk about two at the same time. So we've got Christmas Tree Lane. And Christmas by Starlight. Both Hallmark movies. Both released in 2020. Both have the same plot. <laughs> so basically, uh, Christmas Tree Lane is... She owns a, her family's music shop. And um, she meets this guy whose dad's company is tearing the thing down to build some new high-rises. And then Christmas by Starlight is this uh, woman. Her parents' restaurant has been told that it needs to close because her because this guy's parents company is going to tear it down <laughs> and build some high rises <laughs> and not only that the solution at the end is exactly the same they build the high rises above the shops <laughs> so I, I quite liked christmas tree lane um i didn't think the main woman i didn't think her character was that likable um, i found her a bit annoying for no apparent reason but she was actually all right by the end of it <laughs> whereas christmas by starlight Oh, it was like it's been one of the worst ones I've watched. Um, there was no chemistry whatsoever between the two main actors, and neither of the characters were likable. Um, yeah, they they were just, and it the romance didn't make sense because they were very snarky towards each other. Um, and the thing is, they were snarky towards each other because they both went in not liking each other as well, which is fine usually because one of them is usually quite nice, but. They both started off being quite horrible to each other. Um, so yeah, it didn't, it didn't go for either of them to be that likeable. Um, so because of that, it was a bit... Mm. Um, so the next one I watched, Good Morning Christmas. I like this one. This is a good one. So this is about two uh, morning TV presenters who... Um, one of them's about to leave because uh, they don't get along. Um, and, but they have to do one last thing and announce at midnight. Not midnight. New Year's Eve, that that's their last show, not New Year's Eve, Christmas Eve, that this is their last show together. Um, but because they have to go to this place for a week, they end up falling for each other, turns out. Um, and what I liked about it is the main guy also has a girlfriend all throughout as well. Um, so that was quite good. Um, one thing that is starting to get to me of a lot of these Hallmark and Christmas films is people's communication is not good. If they just communicated... None of these things would be a problem. They'd never have that argument near the end, but then I suppose he wouldn't have a plot. So, <laughs> but I did like that one. Um, it was an enjoyable film. Um, obviously, none of these films are going to win an Oscar or be anything that you're going to watch over and over again forever. It's a one watch and done, pretty much. Um, but I did, I did enjoy that one, and I was, I was quite looking forward to that one as well because I quite liked the idea of the plot, so I wasn't disappointed. Um, so the next one I watched was USS Christmas. It's about um, the well, they navy pilots, the people that 
do the planes on the boat? Anyway, uh, over Christmas they get this thing called a Tiger Cruise where the family comes on board. Um, and so basically it turns out that uh, the girl falls in love with a family friend. And what was good is they kissed in the middle and not at the end. I mean, they did kiss at the end. But they kissed in the middle as well, which never happens on the ones that I've been watching at the moment. It's always kiss at the end and credits. Um, but it was it was quite slow, a bit boring. Held my attention for an up a bit. Um, yeah, just wasn't... Oh, and basically they find stuff on the ship and they go to find this like love story that she wants to the lady wants to report on for a newspaper. But it it was nothing special, nothing new. It wasn't my favourite one. So we'll go on to Disney Plus and then we'll go on to Netflix because there's a lot on Netflix. Um so Disney Plus, Twelve Dates of Christmas. Not to be confused with the 12 Dates of Christmas that I watched <laughs> last time. But this one is Disney Plus. Um, I think it's an ABC family film. Uh, it's from 2011. Uh, and basically, it's basically Groundhog Day on Christmas Eve. Um, I actually enjoyed it. It was a good film. However, I think it went on for about 20 minutes, 15 minutes too long. Um, just because it was Groundhog Day. They kept doing it over and over again. And I feel like the character... Um, wasted some days uh, in the sense of not doing as much as she could have to have got out that loop I know she was trying different things but I feel like she tried it over and over again too much so that was just the problem with the writing a little bit um, but other than that it was a fun film um, and it held my attention and I quite enjoyed it um, plus it was nice to see a film that was a little bit older as well not as much technology they had home phones <laughs> so that was quite nice to watch so on to Netflix so Christmas Inheritance. Um, so basically, this was the girl from the 100. Uh, she, I can't remember her name. Uh, she's been Sleepover Club as well. Uh, I love that she still does stuff because I grew up watching Sleepover Club. Anyway, she has to deliver uh, some letters to prove to her dad that she is responsible enough to take over the business one day uh, to her, to like her dad's other business partner in the small village. And she goes there and basically learns the meaning of being nice basically and not being overly privileged because she gets sent there with a hundred dollars and that's all she's got um and that film started as well with her having a fiance as well which was quite good um so then you've got this other love story that goes through it um and i enjoyed that one it was good obviously it's not the best written um it had its moments though and i did enjoy it that's all i really need to say although <laughs> the film popped up in the hol uh, the holiday calendar. Was it holiday calendar it's called? Yeah, that I just watched, which is so funny because they came out the same year and they're both Netflix Christmas originals. And like, so she was watching that on her Netflix. It was funny. Um, so we, yesterday I watched Operation Christmas Drop. Um, so that is the new one from, is it Cat Graham? Cat Graham? Bonnie from Vampire Diaries. Uh, and... A guy who was in Hunger Games but showed my husband and he went, that's Thingy from Vikings. So he's from Vikings. Um, yeah, anyway, so Operation Christmas Drop is about the government wants to stop them from doing Operation Christmas Drop, which is where they drop Christmas boxes down for um, different islands that don't have much privilege. Um, it had some of the world's worst CGI I've seen in years in it. Uh, there was like a gecko in a room that she was staying in and oh it was the worst thing ever so much that when my husband got home I put it on just to show him that clip and he was like oh yeah awful however it was an okay film um I'll tell you what they also made uh, the main woman I'm gonna I'm just gonna call her cat because I'm not too sure what her last name is they put her in some really frumpy clothes like they made her look so much older than she is clothes wise when they didn't need to like she was on, on an island yes they put her in office clothes for this island but they were just so baggy ill-fitting and did and just the colouring of the clothes as well that just looked like a 40 year old woman would wear or a 50 year old woman and she's like in her late 20s early 30s so she, they didn't need to dress her like that um that really got me <laughs> i know it's just an outfit but costume department needed to be spoken to um yeah it was an okay film. It's one to watch if you've got nothing else to watch, basically. Um, then, then we watched this year's big Netflix film. Well, I say this year's, it's the 
you know, the holidays. I enjoyed it. I wasn't disappointed. I think it was really good fun. Um, I love at the end when she like, I mean, this wasn't really a spoiler because it's every rom-com. When she professed her love for him, he walked off and then went, oh, no, I'm only kidding. And they came back. I thought that was great. Um, there were some bits that were a bit over the top. Um, like when he blows his finger off. Um, and they're all doing drugs in the hospital room. I was a bit like, oh, it's not that funny. But I'm not that big on like stoner humour that much because I don't find it funny. Um, but it was a good film. Um, there was a connection between the characters. Uh, you got that that like emotional screen, which was good. Although, oh, I don't know if the screen just went funny then. I'm on five percent. Big time, hurry up. Um, it had Arizona from Grey's Anatomy in it, and if you've seen Grey's Anatomy spoiler here if you haven't seen it but you know that she's married to Callie and then she gets a bit bored and makes out with another nurse or doctor rather and then Callie finds out the same thing happened in the holiday and I text my friends going oh my god the same thing happened it's Arizona 2.0 um, but yeah other than that it was a good film and I definitely recommend watching it um, so then we watched uh, Midnight at the Magnolias. This is another Netflix original. It came out a little bit earlier in the year. I think it's like one of their first Christmas films that they put on this year. Um, and basically it's about um, these two radio hosts. They've grown up together. They're best friends. Um, and they pretend to be together um, to kind of further their career a little bit because they've just broken up with their partners. And then it all gets it all gets a little bit messy because their families are like, oh my God, we've been waiting for this. Um the first 20, 30 minutes, slow, boring, weren't enjoying it. But after that point, I did start to root for the characters. You was rooting for them to get away with it. You was rooting for them to get together. Um, it's worth a watch, but just be warned that you will have a very boring thir first 20, 30 minutes of not much going on. Because um, I wouldn't even really say there was much depth to their characters, that you're getting to know the characters at all. It's just kind of like setting everything up and you're a bit like... <sighs> Um, but definitely stick with it if you do watch it. Um, then I watched Holiday in the Wild this morning. Do not waste your time. <laughs> it was so boring. If you like a lot of clips of just seeing elephants walking around, like little bits of like people walking in the sunlight with the sun going down, that's for you. <sighs> like, not only that, I was led to believe it was a Christmas film. There was about 20 minutes of Christmas in the whole entire film. Um, yeah. Don't waste your time. Um, it's, it was just boring. Um, wasn't much depth to the story. Wasn't anything to really root for. It was just some a character finding themselves. And it wasn't even really well written for it to be something that made you want to watch. I kept watching because I was like, where's the Christmas? And I got 40 minutes in. I paused it when Christmas turned up. Don't be fooled by the opening credits. When there's a Christmas tree, it's August. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. I'd skip that one. I'd just completely skip that film. It just wasn't worth it. Good cast, though, but not worth it. So then, the last one of our Christmas roundup. We'll do it really quick because we've hit in 15 minutes. was well, The Holiday Calendar. I finished this about two hours ago. It is a great Netflix Christmas film. I think if this film was done, really big budget, big names, a little bit... Maybe a little bit better writing, maybe. That would have been a big Christmas film to be released at the cinema, but obviously it's Netflix. So we tone it down a little bit, have less known of people. Uh, but this one had Cat Graham in it again. Um, and basically she gets given an antique advent calendar um, that's essentially magic. And it's basically predicting the future. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a good film. It's one of the ones that I'm gonna, when people are like, oh, what films have you watched on Netflix? Any good Christmas films on Netflix? I'll say, go watch The Holiday Calendar. And I saw that pop up last year when it came out. And um, I was like, oh, maybe I'll watch it. I never watched the trailer or anything. I just thought, oh, it's Bonnie from Vampire Diaries. I'll go watch it. And it was good. It's good fun. Um, I, was, I wouldn't say it's high energy or anything. Um, it's just fun. Um, and I think it, does take a very obvious lead around about 40 minutes in like halfway um of where it's going um but you're still kind of like oh i need to watch this see, see what's going on and i did enjoy it. it's one of the best netflix christmas films i've seen at the moment um it definitely wouldn't be it for everyone um but i enjoyed myself when i was watching it so <laughs> I'm about to get to 15 minutes, so I'm going to stop talking. But that was my Christmas roundup. Um, I'm also going to talk about Noel on Disney Plus. 
but I'm going to do a separate review for that one, but I'll watch that one too. So, yeah, if you like that, thumbs up. If not, don't worry. <laughs> Move along. Um, yeah, and I'll see you soon. Bye.